In 1917, the Federation of Councils of Greater New York arranged use of summer camp facilities at the Kanawaki Lakes and Harriman State Park for the five New York City Borough Councils. The Bronx Council organized and operated Camp Ranaqua for Bronx Scouts each summer from 1917 to 1928. Scouts took a boat to Bear Mountain and then a bus to camp, a 50 cent trip in 1917. Large khaki pyramid tents held seven scouts each. Meals were provided in the lodge building. Scouts participated in nature study, tracking, fire building, canoeing, swimming, life saving, and first aid. Daily attendance grew from 35 scouts in 1917 to 368 scouts in 1928. However, there was limited space for expansion. Ranaqua shared the Kenawaki Lakes with 11 other scout camps and 2,000 scouts. In 1927, the Boy Scout Foundation of Greater New York acquired the Ten Mile River Camps property near Narrowsburg, New York. In 1929, Camp Ranaqua moved to the new Ten Mile River Scout Camps, becoming the third operating camp. Administrative support came from the Bronx Council headquarters at Mott Avenue in the Bronx. During the 1930s, each of the five New York City borough councils operated a camp at TMR for their own scouts. Camp Ranaqua was the scout camp for Bronx Scouts. The Bronx Council section of the Ten Mile River Tract contained 2,500 acres of generally undeveloped land providing flexibility in the design and construction of the camp. A 600-foot dam was constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps, turning Old Wildcat Lake into the 35-acre Lake Nyankyu. The camp was designed and constructed under the supervision of Harvey A. Gordon, Chief of Construction. It was located a considerable distance from Lake Nyankyu due to the need for flat land. Lumber was obtained from a mill located between Unit C and the lake. Most campers were Italian and Jewish sons of first-generation immigrants to the United States. Scouting and summer camp were part of the process by which they were introduced to American culture. In 1929, the first campers found little besides the blockhouse, dining halls, tents, and tent platforms. During the early years, scouts improved the camp by blazing trails, removing stumps, building stone walls, and grading playfields. Round-trip transportation from the Bronx to Camp Ranaqua cost $4. Scouts took buses from the Bronx Scouting Headquarters, up Route 17, to the Ten Mile River Camps, passing Camp Manhattan on the Zumi Trail, a trip of 110 miles. Camp Ranaqua consisted of three operating units. Unit A, the administrative area, Unit C, which served scouts in a kosher dining hall, and Unit E, which served scouts in a non-kosher dining hall. Units B and D were planned for the opposite side of Lake Nyankyu, but were never built. Unit A consisted of the blockhouse, camp director's cabin, maintenance man's cabin, and waterfront. Unit C included eight troop tent sites and a dining hall and waterfront. Unit E had its own troop tent sites, dining hall, and waterfront separate from Unit C. Each unit had its own staff and programs. Scouts of all faiths attended both camps. Each unit had a 272-person capacity and operated a nine-week season in 1933. Camp was organized into two-week periods, but most scouts stayed all summer. Scouts from Bronx troops were organized into provisional camp troops, with troop leaders provided by the camp. Scout camp cost $15 for the first two weeks, $10 per additional week. No subsidized camperships were available, but scouters and committee members of many troops 
paid the camp fee for their needy scouts. Troop leaders and assistant troop leaders were full-time staff members serving all summer, but they were not scoutmasters. The troop did not operate with youth positions such as patrol leaders. A senior scout from each tent was responsible for the scouts in his tent. Arriving buses were met and welcomed by the camp staff on the Zumi Trail. Scouts gathered in their unit dining hall where their names were read off a list assigning their camp troop and patrol tent. Some of the scouts swapped troops until everyone was satisfied. After unpacking and cleaning themselves, the scouts received a physical examination and a swim test, had their evening meal, and attended an opening campfire, where they learned a few important do's and don'ts about life in camp. Units C and E each included eight troop sites, consisting of four eight-person patrol tents arranged in a circle, and a smaller tent for the adult troop leaders. Tents were gradually replaced with Adirondack-style eight-person cabins through the 1930s until most troop sites had two cabins. Each cabin had four bunk beds, foot lockers for each scout, and were considered superior to the tents. Each pair of troop sites shared a latrine wash house and shower. Additional facilities included a campmaster cabin, dining hall, and kitchen, and two cook's tents. Electric lights were not installed in the dining halls until 1937. Waterfront staff included a waterfront director and assistant waterfront director. Following breakfast from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. came the daily game period, which included baseball, basketball, volleyball, and horseshoes. Then came a daily swim period before lunch and again in the late afternoon. Scouts also had their daily siesta. Each evening featured a special activity, including a song night, campfire night, wrestling night, storytelling night, and a show night. On Sundays, parents and friends visited the camp, a most welcome event, since they usually brought with them gifts of candy, cookies, and salamis, as well as, of course, clean socks, shirts, and underwear. Many camp activities took place on the Unit C and E waterfronts on Lake Nyankew. Non-swimmers stayed in the cribs and received swimming instruction. Swimmers could dive and use the rowboats and canoes after they passed the canoe test. Life-saving instruction was also available and scouts could also join the swim team. Special waterfront activities included moonlight boat and canoe rides. Also, there were day-long canoe trips on the Delaware River. Handicraft instruction started in the blockhouse, then expanded when the Handicraft Lodge was opened in 1936. The Ranaqua Nature Trail had labels identifying various flowers, trees, plants, rocks, and animals. Regular nature hikes started in 1933. The Ranaqua Museum had a varied nature collection. Athletic activities included volleyball, baseball, and handball. Track teams ran on the Zumi Trail and round the camp in a steeplechase. The Ranaqua Olympics featured a variety of athletic, track and field, and water competitions. Scouts took 14-mile day hikes to Cushecton Center or Lake Huntington and two-hour evening hikes. Special unit activities included carnivals, Mardi Gras, and axemanship demonstrations. Saturday night was show night, with both units providing varied entertainment, including dramatic plays and comedy skits. Indian pageants were also held in the blockhouse, with unit C and E participation.